friends. Lomography recently sent me another roll of their Phantom Kino ISO 8 black and white film to continue my project of shooting slightly longer exposures of movement artists. If you haven't seen the first video that I did, I suggest checking it out as it's got a bit more information about my inspirations for starting this project and the challenges that I overcame the first time that I tried. It's probably on screen already. So this time I was in Tokyo and I contacted a bunch of friends in very different movement disciplines for a wider range of experiments to see what works and what doesn't. And although I dislike the stick around until the end culture, I will be talking about what I think worked, didn't work, mistakes I made and lessons that I learned this time around at the end of the video. So stick around to the end. Anyway, for now, let's get on with seeing some of the cool people that I worked with and some of the cool photos that I managed to take.
So there's some of the photos that I took. If you like them, please let me know. But as I said earlier, I'd like to talk a bit about some of the challenges that I had this time around and some of the things that I learned. So I always try to have a dark background and then a light subject. That way we can get some nice light trails without them disappearing into the background. For the juggling and manipulation disciplines, it's quite easy as long as the objects that they're using are quite light. White juggling balls, silver hula hoops, for example, create fantastic light trails. However, when your subject is an acrobat, then their prop is their own body. And for that, you want to create light trails with their clothing. So this time, unfortunately, due to the darker clothing that the acrobat was wearing, we didn't get quite as pronounced trails as I was hoping that we would get. Luckily, the white shoes did end up creating quite a nice outline to it all, and some white text on the hoodie at least gave some texture, but I think a lighter clothing overall would have created significantly nicer trails. Now, on the same subject, but talking about the film stock itself, it's advertised as panchromatic, which means that it should capture all the different colored lights equally. However, the red ribbon was quite bright in real life, but didn't seem to come across at all in the photo. So I'm not sure if it was just too dark, moved too fast, or red is not actually picked up very strongly with this particular film stock. That does transition onto the next problem, which is the speed of objects. Now, I decided to shoot some jump rope this time. I thought that'd be really cool to see the shapes of the jump rope, but in the end, it was actually way too fast. I think with the speed of jump rope, you can shoot at like 125th of a second, even 250th of a second, and get some nice light trails. So shooting at half a second ended up just being way too long to actually capture anything, I think, really visually interesting. Still, some of the movements which had a more repetitive shape to them over the exposure came out quite nice. Finally, another point about this film stock, if you're gonna shoot it, is that while it does have a very small exposure latitude, you can pull out a reasonable amount of detail from the shadows, whereas you can't get anything from the highlights, which I think is quite normal for a cinema film, which I believe this is. The name Kino is kind of a hint to that. So if you're gonna do either of the options, underexpose is the better one. So that's it. I'd like to thank Lomography for sending me another roll of this really fun film, and to all the artists who gave up some of their time to help me with this fun project. All their Instagrams are down in the description. Make sure to go and give them all a follow and I will see you in the next video. Peace.